Hello everyone, it's Mike Levin on Code with Mike Friday, and I'm going to try and actually get one of these coding videos in, although it isn't technically going to be programming coding, it's going to be file manipulation stuff. On the left over here, you'll see my uh, journal, my thought journal, uh, daily work log, which you can see at MikeLevinSEO.com anytime you want, <clears throat> although it'll take forever to load. And on this side, you can see me in the Pipulate repository, uh, the directory that gets created when you do a git pull of the Pipulate project. And uh, I have decided to have this strong naming convention so that when you look in there, um, there are things that uh, don't start with the same letters alphabetically, or at least not a lot of overlap. So when you're getting ready to edit them, right now, if I do vim pi and I do tab for command line completion, it doesn't know what to pick. I've got a bunch of stuff. It stops at where the ambiguity is. And that's become sort of annoying. So I have decided to go with uh, some, some specific naming conventions based on various thoughts. Like you never have to type the cron things over again. So it's nice to name them with uh, uh, long explicit names. And the one in here right now is, uh, let's see. First, let me do a git status. Make sure that, uh, oh yeah, okay. Let me uh, git revert. Oh wait, that's one that I added. So I can just remove that with uh, SCHPIP. You can see the thought work I was doing that made me have to think it out real clearly because um, some of those names I was coming up with were not ones I was going to like to live with long term. And I know some people will complain that I'm using this sort of coding time on YouTube for talk about file naming, but these are decisions you're going to have to live with the rest of your life on this project. And there are a few decisions more important than how you name your files. It determines how easy it is to go in and edit them, to switch between them, especially if you use Vim and you use uh, colon B for buffer, and then the name of the file you want to work on. You don't want a lot of overlap in their file names, so you can poof, poof, poof between files. And uh, so the first one we're going to change is the biggie, pipulate.py. And normally you would do something like move and use the Linux command, but it's best to do it in a way where Git knows what you're doing. Git has a lot of the standard Linux file manipulation uh, rules built in, so it's going to be git move. And command line completion works here, but you can see why I want to change this so bad. Pipulate.py is going to become da pipulate.py. Where's the pipulate function, the big one? The pipulate function, it's in that file, so I'm going to be able to remember that real easy. It's got a good strong nickname and, you know, labeling things with a strong nickname is a really good way to go to make it uh, memorable forever forward. And the uh, interesting thing is that the one called pipulate without a file extension is the um, one that goes as a, um, a Debian style start stop daemon. And I should probably produce a whole video on that, but basically uh, when you've got a, a daemon running, uh, and I'm going to have to, it's not going to run properly because I'm changing names of files now, but you go etc init.d, at least on Debian derivative systems, and then the uh, name of the uh, daemon, it's a script that's sitting in that location, and then you can do start, or you can do stop, and in some cases restart, and this is how things like Apache run. Um, so I'm going to actually keep pipulate as the name of the daemon for the web server, because when you're doing development work, it's the web server you're mostly going to be stopping and starting, maybe putting in different modes. But there's going to be another daemon in there, so I'm going to copy, and it's going to be a, a Linux command to copy it, because when you're copying, you, know, get, you can always just git add that file. So I'm going to be copying pipulate, but that's going to now be sched, schedulate, 
Schedulate, S-C-H-E-D-U-L-A-T-E. So pipulate will be the daemon that controls the uh, web server starting and stopping, and schedulate will control the, um, the scheduler or the loop uh, processing, which actually reminds me, um, there is now going to be uh, web pipulate.py, obvious enough, and then loop pipulate or loopipulate.py. And I do that because over here you can see I just like the, uh, let's see, search backwards. Next, next. I like that wonderful symmetry there of uh, both of them being the long, uh, the same uh, length and characters. And if I did schedule pipulate or something in there, it would become too long, a bit awkward. Or if I used both P's for loop and pipulate. So I like loop pipulate. And those are going to be container files which just basically call .pipulate. And they don't exist yet. And I could create them when I go in there uh, with Vim. I could do Vim space those file names. But I'm just going to touch each one, which will create them. It's a Unix slash Linux command to create a file where one didn't exist before. In fact, I'll just do a clear. And I'll do an ls for a before. Touch web pip. Pulate.py ls, there it is, right there. And then uh, I'll do touch loop pipulate.py. And these are just going to be container files to essentially launch pipulate in one of the two different modes the web server mode or the scheduler mode. So we've got both of those files in there. So I've now done the uh, the loop pipulate, schedulate, web pipulate, and now all I need to do is these two cron things. Now there already should be a cron thing in here. Uh, yeah, I believe it's pipuweb. Let's look at that. Less pipuweb. Yep, that's my cron job. Uh, and you can see the cron job refers to the daemon, right? Simple enough. Uh, oh, I should fix that. It's, oh no, the daemon's name is, is still the same. I'm going to rename this file and then uh, make another copy of the file and edit the contents of the copy. That's my, my plan right now. So it's git move tip you web and that's going to become cron web tip you late. Again, there's no file extensions. These cron jobs and the daemons don't get a .sh, as one might think, being bash scripts as they are. Now we're going to cp cron web pipulate and call it cron loop pipulate. Cron loop pipulate. Yes, 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 yes. Mm, that's looking uh, pretty correct there, I do believe. Now we do have a few things to clean up still, things referring to things whose names have changed. Uh, the one that I just did, what was that? Cron loop pipulate the contents of that. So we're going to vim cron loop. And there's still a little overlap in file names, but you can see it's not nearly as bad. You're never going to have to edit these things, at least not on the order of how often you're going to be editing .pipulate. So uh, if you're doing any dev work on this, this other, these files that with dev work, cron jobs, a cron job, it's just sitting there forever. And uh, this is not going to uh, be pipulate because this is the one that's going to uh, launch the scheduler. So that's sketch, schedulate, schedulate, S-C-H-E-D-U-L-A-T-E. -E. I got it right. Save, right, quit. And uh, let's see, what else changes? Um, there's going to be a lot of, you know, there's got to be content put into a couple of these files that isn't there right now. But I'm just thinking about things that reference uh, things, cron, so two cron files, 
and the two daemon files. Ah, the daemon files have got to change. So uh, not the pipulate daemon file, uh, at least not until I actually do the work to use the container files. In fact, it's probably the case in, in both of them. So we've got um, pipulate and schedulate vim. Schedulate is going to have a, a change in content. I put a lot of uh, instructions up here. I'll have to uh, I'll have to update that based on you know the two different types of daemons. But basically, uh, we just jump to the bottom. Um, all this stuff is going to be running with PIDs. I have it so that it can run with knowing what the task is based on the process ID or based on the process name. I started out with the process name because I had two Pythons running and quitting with a process ID only got one of the two, but I learned that that was because of Flask running in debug mode, it had a, um, a task respawner. And I like that task respawner being on, but it really makes it difficult to allow the two daemons to live together. So I'm going back into PID mode, and when I create a syntax error, I'm just going to have to restart the server. No big deal. Um, but the name of the uh, daemon that needs to be started and stopped is different. Uh, oh, yeah. These, hmm, interesting. Do I change it now or do I change it later? Uh, I'll change it to what it needs to be. This is uh, the, the scheduler. So the scheduler is going to uh, run the program. Uh, let's see. I got to become comfortable and familiar with these words. That's loopipulate as opposed to webpipulate. So loopipulate.py. That's our file. Looking good, looking good. These things are so easy. Writing a daemon, uh, background, you know, easy to self-respond, never runs twice at the same time task. Sounds like an intimidating thing, but in reality, uh, it's actually quite uh, simple. And since I'm on this role, I'll also do pipulate. And uh, let's see, we're going to be changing, oh, they have pipulate to web pipulate. So we just search backwards, since we're at the bottom of the file, to pipulate.py. You can see how in Vim, it's not about scrolling, it's about searching or slashing or question marking your way through the file. You'll never have to scroll again. You never have to take your hand away from the keyboard for the mouse. And it's a, a really nice way to sort of get into the zone and stay in the zone when you're coding. Okay, those uh, two references are correct now. The two daemons are updated. The uh, two cron jobs, I believe, are, are updated. Uh, less cron uh, pipulate. Yep, that refers to schedulate. And less cron uh, Web, and these will all become second nature to me. This is moments after I rename the file. So, you know, don't play pile on based on me having to think through these. This is just the first few moments with a new naming convention. And shifting naming conventions, it takes a little bit to rewire your, your brain. And uh, oh, this does have to change. That will become, uh, oh no, no, the daemon uh, remains the same. The daemon is the one that gets to be called pipulate. That way, whenever you're doing dev work, all you do is, uh, in fact, if you set the path correctly, all you, oh yeah, if you set it in slash user, slash local, slash sbin, a reference to, uh, to, the, uh, to the daemon, which is a great way to do it, all you have to do is walk in there and type pipulate, and uh, you'll be in dev mode. It will automatically quit out of the background one and uh, uh, run it in, 
command line mode so you get all your debugging output to the console. But I'll save that for the next video. Let me just do the git cleanup work and, and cut the video and call it a day. Uh, git status. You know, we added a bunch. Git add dot. That adds everything. And then uh, git commit. Now, it's actually going to be broken right now because, uh, you know, I renamed files. You probably could go in there and just type Python space uh, webpipulate, Python space, yeah, webpipulate.py. Oh, no, that's one that I made. Oh, yeah, no, no, I renamed it. Yeah, let's, oh, ha, okay. Before I commit, uh, this is an interesting thing. Pipulate.py be, becomes, no, oh, that doesn't even stay there. That's dot .pipulate. Uh, dot .pipulate is going to be the large bulk of the program, and these other two are going to be wrappers. Okay, yeah, that's some copy and paste work between files, which is super easy to do in Vim. And maybe I'll make that the subject of the next video. Uh, git commit new naming conventions for coexisting. Uh, this is uh, web and cron. Uh, web and schedule jobs, web, web and schedule modes, different modes of populating working with git push, and bam! Thanks for joining me, hope to talk to you again soon, and don't forget to subscribe.